Hello from Lurie and the Mermaid Room. We're starting out in the courtyard today. Got a great big saguaro cactus. Blooms way out there. A few little closer on the uh, arms here. Anyhow, right next to my favorite cactus, the Ocotillo, which I have several out here in the front. So we have just under two acres of property here. And uh, here we are. My courtyard. I don't have any beautiful green things to show you, really. Um, oh, let's go into the mermaid room. This is my front door. So, welcome to Lurie Walls Mermaid Room. First thing you see when you walk in the door the Red Sea Reefer 525XL. And it's kind of a nice, cool, dark cave environment to help with some of the cooling. In here we have these block, block out blinds that don't let the sun in and we don't get any of that uh, radiant heat gain. So uh, just thought we'd take a peek. We've got the ceiling fan on. I turned all the lights on so you can see the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> this is kind of the first tank out here that's uh, basically it's in my living room slash great room. And so I've hooked up a CO2 tank. Let's see if I get the light to come on here. Got an automatic um, LED. There we go. It's supposed to be working there, but honestly, this thing is really not working very much because of this wonderful meter that was suggested that, to make sure we have this pH meter, but we have it set to come on if it gets above or no below seven. So it's really not it's really not uh, running very much. And I have a lot more plants that I'd like to get in here, and maybe a couple more fish. But it's pretty quiet because uh, just one pump is happening on here. Very quiet. I have to keep a heater on it just in case it cools off at night. But um, and back over to the mermaid room area. I've gone ahead and turned on the lights. And of course, everything is wonderful in here. I had to re-scape again because I literally had to tear down the aquascape that was in the aquarium so that I could catch the Clarky clownfish and remove them from the Red Sea Reefer. And since then, things are really calmed down in here. I don't have sand flying through the col water column continuously, so that has helped quite a bit. So if you have the clownfish kicking up sand, I know what that's like. And everything uh, is looking super duper great. The sump, still the same, no changes here. The simplicity, protein skimmer see some dark nastiness happening there and the hang on the back refugium that I have hanging on the front of my sump I just went ahead and turned the lights on so that you can kind of see yep it's very healthy I have spent quite a bit of time keeping track of turning the lights off and on on that because it does like to grow cyanobacteria in that little low flow area so sometimes the lights are out for a couple days then I turn them back on again and everything's fine and the 240 gallon also doing super great starting over here with uh, the male Clarky clownfish the sailfin tang, um, the emperor, 
the new humu and the birdgrass and an unnamed unlikable fish. <laughs> One of the first exiles from the Red Sea Reefer. And I've got the two cleaner shrimp here, not having any problems. Then the female is definitely hosting with her anemone. There's actually a second anemone that's starting to look pretty decent after weeks and weeks of not doing anything. Looks like I'll have two anemones there. And I got the Devil's Hands, the Hollywood Stunner. Everything's really doing good. At first I thought, well, this thing's going to get eaten up. It just has a little bit ruffly edges, but nobody is eating it as far as I can tell. I don't think anybody would want to. But somebody that I wanted to kind of let you see, this is his little hangout. The, the yellow-bellied dog face puffer uses the Hollywood Stunner as his little umbrella. So he hides and lays and sleeps right, that's his hangout right there. It's a shady spot. He can see the food when I'm feeding, so he immediately comes out from there. And uh, everybody's, you know, got their spot in an aquarium. And I have to just tell you that this humo is spectacular. He's, you know, a very young kiddo, so he's going to grow much, much bigger. But his colors and markings very, very nice. Um, the half horse chiller, keeping things cool. And I do, about every 10 days, I take out the filters in this canister filter and put two clean filters in. It's right around every 10 days. So, you know, three times a month. And what's powering all of that is this gold dart hybrid pump. You can't even hear it. Massive pump. You cannot hear it. The only noise that you're going to hear here really is probably some splashing into the socks. Two outlets to the socks back there, nice and dirty. Told you you'd see some good, the bad, and the ugly. Protein skimmer. Um, massive amounts of algae growing down here, macroalgae, and they want it down at uh, the fish store. So I'm going to be taking some of that. I've got a, I've got a bucket ready to go. <laughs> Gonna take out quite a bit of this, and it's just you can see it's just got strings of streamers just growing like a I don't know, a head of hair. <laughs> it's magnificent. Um, and that's on a timer, otherwise, I'd turn that light on so you can see it, but I didn't get a chance to do that. Out here on the end of the tank, I have my auto top off RODI reservoir which is eh, you know can hold up to seven gallons of water in there I never really fill it all the way and here's the overflow from the backside so you know I can see everything one day I even had a tiny fish go over through the weirs and I had to get a net and capture him in this overflow bin area. There are some small fish living down here. I've got, um, oh, what do you call them? Engineer gobies. There's another little blue goby down here too. A little cleaner goby. And um, they all hang out in these little seashells in a pile of sand they've made for themselves to feel safe. So everything's super great here. And just taking a spin around my collection, I, I found a really kind of a cool little 
um, box to put those collectibles that I've had for years and years just sitting in the bathroom, you know. I now have them hanging on the wall. I really like that. And then back over to the corkscrew and enemy. Uh, the only other thing that's in this tank with him is his pistol shrimp. And there is one little cleaner crab running around in there. You see him once in a while. I, there's not even a snail in there. I probably should do that. Probably need a couple snails. I may found, have found somebody who's interested in keeping this guy. So my intentions for this 20 gallon innovative marine aquarium was really for some pipe fish, you know, some small fish in a, you know, sandy environment with, um, some macro growing, but uh, because this corkscrew anemone would eat pretty much anything, <laughs> I'm afraid to even put my finger in there. I, I think I think he would try to grab a lip, gobble up your hand. His body is massive. Anyway, um, I have some plans in store for this tank in the future, so I just need to make arrangements to take this guy and trade him. So anyhow, future changes. Oh, one more thing. This awesome pump. I have made a purchase of this Synchra SDC Siche pump, return pump, has been installed by yours truly me. The line was long enough. I had to add a piece to connect it. Yep, that's Lori's handiwork right there. It's not leaking, and it gets the job done until things get slower for my HVAC company and my husband can help me do a little better plumbing in here. But um, for now, it gets the work done. It's the job done. Everybody's happy. I've gone two minutes over what I wanted to. So thanks for stopping by, you guys. Have a wonderful day. Keep on swimming.